Welcome back to Smarty Van. Today we're in Antelope Island in the Great Salt Lake in Utah. I'm Mike and I live with my partner Shar in our 2022 4x4 Sprinter that we built from the ground up as a DIY home automated home on wheels. Today we're going to talk about powering ESP devices. If your van is like ours and your house system is 12 or 24 volts, you're going to need to convert that voltage to 3.3 or 5 volts for your ESP microcontrollers. And today we're going to talk about how to do that. Let's get to work. Okay, just a quick one here today. We've been talking a lot about ESP 8266s and ESP 32s and making our own devices using ESP Home and Home Assistant. And in the last couple of videos, I sort of brushed past how I power these devices. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to get power into these devices. These run on 3.3 volt logic, but since they have USB, they often have down converters to go from five volts to 3.3 volts. Usually there's pins exposed on these devices to input both 3.3 volts here or 5 volts on this side and this 5 volts would go through the same power regulation as the USB to convert that power to 3.3 volts. I found the easiest way to use these is to actually use the USB port. So there's a couple options and my favorite is this little guy. This is a 6 to 24 volt down regulator and that takes 6 to 24 volts in on this side and regulates that down to 5 volts on this side at 1.5 amps. And then what I like to do is just take an old USB cable and cut it off. This is a micro cable and if I snip that off, find the positive and negative wires and connect these two together, then I can just plug this straight into an ESP8266. That works really well. Or you can buy these pigtail USB ends if you need something special like a right angle adapter or you don't have any old cables lying around. So that works really well for micro USB or USB-C. You can put any end you want at the end of this step down regulator. Regulator. Another option that I've considered but haven't really used too much is something like this. This is a 15 watt step down converter. You can input 12 to 24 volts here and you're going to get 5 volts out of this USB-C end at 3 amps. So this is much beefier and way more than we need for a microprocessor. So I usually stick with these little down regulators here. They're really affordable, tiny, and you could fit them inside a 3D printed case. I usually print a hole into my 3D printed cases to accept a female barrel connector. That way I can use a male barrel connector here that has screw down terminals so we can send 12 volts in here, send it into the case, go through our step down converter, 12 volts to five volts, and then we'll connect that to the end of a USB cable that I've cut apart. And then we can plug that straight in to our microprocessor. So these are how I usually get 12 volts into my microprocessors. I've also showed you guys boards like this that have four relays on it. But the other nice thing is that they have power input and management here. So you can do seven to 30 volts DC in here. And you can also power this with AC, 90 to 230 volt AC current here. And it has a switching power supply to turn that into DC and step that down to the 3.3 volts that this microprocessor needs here. If you're ever unsure of how much power you need for one of your boards, or you just like to see your power consumption on any USB device, I highly recommend one of these. This is a USB digital tester and it has USB-C and USB-A. It also has micro USB here in the corner. So I've powered up our converter here that has USB-C on it, just so I can sort of demonstrate this. But if we plug this tester in, you can see it's gonna boot up and start to show us our voltage and amperage. And then if we add a board to it here or any other power consumer, we'll see that our power consumption is going to lift there. So this way you can find out how much power your board is drawing over USB. This is a great tool to have in the toolkit. While we're on the subject of power supplies, another great one to have in the kit is this breadboard power supply. This allows you to input 12 volts here as a barrel connector, and then you can output 3.3 or 5 volts to either of the rails on a breadboard. And most breadboards have down the side here a positive and negative rail, so you can choose one side of the board to receive 3.3 volt power and the other side of the board to receive 5 volt power. And that way you can have two different voltages on the board depending on what you're building and testing. This is great for development, not something I would necessarily use in production. Okay, there's a quick look at how I like to power microprocessors in our van. I'll drop a bunch of links to all the products that I just showed down in the description below. And if you have other methods that you like to use, drop some comments. And if you're having trouble or need some help, also hit us up in the comments and we'll do our best to help out. Until next time, safe travels.